Hello class. Sorry for missing the Zoom meeting the other day. Um, technical difficulties and all that kind of stuff. Um, but I'm back on track now. Hopefully my hardware will work. So, last time we had a Zoom meeting, um, I wanted you to complete this little math assessment thing. So I'm just going to go through this. Make sure to check your work. All that. Um, so as far as the sketch, I said not to worry about it. But if you did sketch it, remember all of these are regular. So that means that all the sides are going to be congruent and all the angles on the inside are congruent. So all of those are going to be congruent. And then to get our number of triangles, that's when we did our n minus 2. So this is going to be 6 minus 2, so I'm going to have a total of 4 triangles. Okay. And then if I know I have 4 triangles, each measure is 140, so I'm just going to multiply them together like that. So when I go 4 times 180, I get 720 degrees. Okay. So these are, this is what you're supposed to be doing. Um, so for this next one, don't worry about sketching it, um, but right here it would be 8 minus 2, so I'd have a total of 6 triangles. So if I have 6 triangles, that's when I multiply by that 180, and I'll get 1,000, or yeah, 1,080, or 10, 1080, like that. And then for the last one down here, just put a 9 in there for... For that, so you should have seven. So you have seven triangles. So then you're going to go seven times 180. And that's 1260 degrees. Just like that. Okay? So now that's the total measure inside a regular shape. Okay? So that's the total measure. So if we wanted to find the measure of an interior angle, that means we're going to do the same thing that we did, but then we have to divide by the number of shapes that there are, or by the number of angles that there are. So for a pentagon, I'm going to go 5 minus 2 times 180, then I have to divide that by 5. I have to divide that solution by 5. So when I go 3 times 180, I get 540, 540 divided by 5, is 108 degrees. So that means that every angle in a pentagon adds up to 100, or each angle is 108 degrees. For an octagon, that's going to be 8 minus 2 times 180, and then divide that by 8. So I'm going to go 6 times 180 divided by 8 is 135, is what you should have had for that. Okay? And for the last one, a 14 again. You're going to go 14 minus 2 times 180 divided by 14, just like that. So I get 12 times 180 is 2,160 divided by 14 is about 154.3 degrees. So just like that. Okay, so hopefully you're following along and this looks familiar. Uh, for the next one, find the measure of one exterior angle. So remember, long ago when we were looking at exterior angles, the total measure, no matter what the shape, is 360 degrees. So we just divide that 360 by however many angles there are. So this one's going to be 360 divided by 3, because that's how many sides a triangle has. And when I do that, I get 120 degrees. So that's the exterior angle. So if we have a triangle like this, what we just found is this. That's 120 degrees. Sorry, let me pull it up there. All right, that's the exterior angle. Okay, so that means the interior one would be 60 degrees because that has to measure 180. For a square, we just go 360 divided by 4. We get 90 degrees. And if you look at a square, that makes sense. If we extend it out, that's going to be 90 degrees. And then a 17 again is just 360 divided by 17. And I get 21.2 degrees. Just like that. Okay? So hopefully that's what you had in the front. Um, if you have any questions, make sure to write them down. All right, turn it over. All right, now this, this time we... we we started to look at the Pythagorean theorem. 
So remember, the Pythagorean theorem only applies to right triangles. These are the legs, and then this is your hypotenuse. Okay? So two sides of a right triangle. Oh, wait, yeah, yeah, yeah. And if this was A and this is B and this is C, remember it's A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Like that. Okay? Oh, kind of off the paper there, sorry. Um, so if we're looking at this, two sides of a right triangle are 9.2 and 13.5. So we don't know what two sides, we just know two sides are. So in this first one, it says find the missing side if these are the legs. So I'm going to go 9.2 squared plus 13.5 squared equals x squared. So that's my setup for it. And then I just put it in my calculator. And I get 266.89 equals x squared. Now are we done? We are not done. Make sure we got to get rid of that square. So that's when we square root it. That's when we square root that bad boy. And you can just leave it as a square root for us. Just understand how to put this in your calculator and get a decimal. But yeah, you should have something like that. So that was for A. So that was if we were given two legs, okay? For B, it says find the missing side of these if these are the lengths of a leg and hypotenuse. Now the hypotenuse is always the largest side. So you know that 13.5 is the hypotenuse. So when I set this up, it's going to be 9.2 squared plus x squared equals 13.5 squared. Like that. Okay. So you're going to have to subtract this from both sides. So I'm going to go 13.5 squared. That was my laundry if you heard a buzzer. I get 13.5 squared minus 9.2 squared. So I know that x squared equals 97.61. And then if you take the square root of both sides, that's what your x is going to be. So you know your x is the square root of 97.61. Like that. Alright? So this time the variable was on the left. Okay, because we were looking for one of the legs. All right. Last couple down here. So this is the Pythag more of the Pythagorean theorem. Now this one we had to do it twice. Okay, we had to figure out this diagonal on the bottom down here, and then after we get that, then we have enough information to get the diagonal going across the cube. Okay, so the sides of a cube is 12 feet by 5 feet by 9 feet. So we have all the outside dimensions, but we have to figure out that diagonal. Okay, so if we know that this is 5 feet, we know this is 12 feet. That's enough information. If this is 5, this has to be 5 feet. And that goes, gives us enough information to figure out our x. So we know that that's going to be one of the legs. So this is the hypotenuse. So first, I'm going to go, remember, this is, the, this is the 90 degree angle. So that's the opposite. So when I set this up, it's going to be 5 squared plus 12 squared equals x squared. And I have to figure out that x squared. So I'm going to put this in my calculator. 5 squared plus 12 squared is 169. And then square root both sides. So the square root of 169 is 13. So I know that this diagonal right here is 13. Okay, I know that length now. Now once I have this length, I know this length right here to be 9. Okay, so if this is 9 and we found this to be 13, this makes a 90 degree angle right here. So our hypotenuse is what we're looking for. So our second step, our second step is going to be 13 squared plus 9 squared equals x squared. So I'm going to go... 9 squared plus 13 squared equals x squared. So that's how I set it up to get this x, to get this one. And then I just put that in my calculator. So I get 9 squared plus 13 squared. And I get 250 equals x squared. And then square root both sides. I just want to see if it's an even number. 
So I know x is the square root of 250. And that's how you get that. So this one you had to do it twice since it's 3D-ish. Okay, and that was a Pythagorean theorem. All right, then down here, a little bit of distance formula. So for this one, for these, um, for this one, these two you could have just counted. So let's see, I'm going to do the Pythagorean theorem. So I'm going to go up. So this is one of the legs. So I got one, two, three, four, five, six. So I know six squared plus one, two, three, four, five squared equals x squared. And that's our x. And then we can add those up and solve. So I get 6 squared plus 5 squared is 61. So I know x squared equals 61. So I know x is going to be the square root of 61. Like that. Okay. So this one you, you could just count. Same here. So right here one of the legs is 1. Just 1 squared plus... How far up do we have to go? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 squared. And then we're looking for the opposite leg. So we get 1 squared plus 9 squared. We get an 82. So we know x is the square root of 82. So it would look like that. Okay? Please check your work. And then down here, this is when we had to actually apply the formula. And remember, the formula is that. The change in x, the, so the distance equals the square root of the change in x squared plus the change in y squared. Okay? So when we go back here, this is our x1, y1. This is our x2, y2. So we're going to subtract the, we're going to get the square root of the change in x. So this is going to be negative 2 minus 0 squared plus, plus 11 minus 5 squared. Like that. So when I put this together, negative 2 minus 0 is negative 2. Negative 2 squared, negative 2 times negative 2 is a positive 4. 11 minus 5 is 6. 6 squared is plus 36. So this is going to be the square root of 40. Square root of 40. And then the last one for B. So for B, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go change in Y or plus the change in x. So I go negative 4 minus a negative 3 squared plus negative 2 minus a 9 squared. So I get that. Okay. So now when I put this all together, negative 4 minus a negative 3, that's the same as negative 4 plus 3. Negative 4 plus 3 is a negative 1 negative 1 squared is just a 1. Negative 2 minus 9 is a negative 11. 11 squared, or negative 11 squared is 121. So you should have had a square root of 122. That's what you should have had for the last one in the back. Okay. So hopefully you completed this. Check your work. Go through the video again. Double check some things if you had any questions. Uh, I'm going to try to get up a quick little quiz here uh, hopefully later today so then we can start um, going through this and then we'll, and then next week we'll start up the new sections that you got okay um, so double check your work make sure everything's cool and have a good weekend yay